Do you consider yourself a sharp better? I consider myself a degenerate better. I don't know whether one is the same. I'm Oscar Goodman, uh, the happiest mayor in the universe and the mayor of the great city of Las Vegas. The Super Bowl weekend attracts a lot of high-end play, maybe the biggest weekend. The Super Bowl is Christmas for sports bettors. It really is. Fortune favors the bold. And this weekend, I see tremendous opportunity, and it's why I'm going to be very aggressive. It's why I'm going to take my shot, because the chance to make a fortune is, is, is huge. Hey, if I go broke and we have to you know, live in a flop house for a year, so be it. My sports betting bankroll, that's my 401k. It's never enough. If I make 100,000 in the Super Bowl, next year I want to make 200,000, and then 500,000, and then a million, and two million. You know, there's a lot of people that claim to make a living off sports betting, but there's only a few that can do it. I wish I knew the secret. <laughs> you look at these massive casinos right in front of us, uh, all up and down the strip, and you say, you know, here we are, we're the little guys, let's beat these big boys. Oh, oh, oh baby, my life's on the line, oh yeah. Mankind has been betting since there's been a mankind. There have been experiments that show that monkeys will bet. When they're searching out ancient Egyptian ruins, what games were they playing? They were playing gambling games, dice games. It's something that is a, most assuredly a part of the human condition. And people say, oh, it's immoral. It's who we are. It's as immoral as sex. If you're one of those people that thinks that sex is immoral, you probably think that gambling is immoral. My name is Ted Savransky. They call me Teddy Covers, and I am a professional sports better living here in Las Vegas, Nevada. See, I didn't choose the name Teddy Covers. The name that, and, and, and the name Teddy Covers actually chose me. The, the name Savransky doesn't seem to roll off the tongue quite the same way. The only problem is, of course, if you're in a lousy streak and you're not picking winners, they start calling you Teddy Doesn't Cover, and uh, that's not a nickname you want to have. We made a line on how long it was going to take us to get down to the Hilton today, you know, over under 21 and a half minutes. I make a line every time I go to the grocery store, over under $154.50. I make a line when I'm waiting in line to get a ticket at the movie theater. I make a line uh, when I, if I sit down and I'm playing a slot machine for five minutes, over under, how much do I walk away with? I'm constantly making numbers and thinking about numbers and it's just a part of my process. The game's sitting in this two and a half slash three range. We call it about 2.75 is a line right now, about two and three quarters uh, is where it's sitting. And a lot of books have been reluctant to move it to three because they expect a fairly heavy onslaught of Steelers money coming this weekend. So it's pretty clear the wise guys, uh, they certainly like Green Bay at Pickham and at minus one. Uh, at minus three, it's a very different story, though. You'll see the buyback coming the other way on Pittsburgh. So uh, this two and a half range, two and three quarters range is where the bookmakers feel comfortable because the one thing they don't want to do is bounce around between two and a half and three end up with the game landing on three and then losing half their wagers and pushing on the other half. That's uh, what's called a dark afternoon or a black day for the sports books. I don't think I'm addicted to gambling at all. I'm making a series of positive expectation wagers on a day in, day out basis. No different from what a Wall Street broker does. No different from what a commodities trader does. Uh, it's something that I do because I make money doing it. If you come in to the process thinking that it's going to be easy or thinking that, oh yeah, you know, everyone comes out to Vegas with these grandiose dreams that they're going to be able to, uh, you know, rise to the top. And it just doesn't work that way. I feel like I've been blessed. I, I believe in God. I believe that, that, that all of us have an energy and a spirit to us. And I believe that my calling was to help people and to share with people the information and the ability to speculate and prognosticate on future events. The one component that you talked about there that doesn't match up with the rest of this market is why would the euro be selling in terms of we have S&Ps at high, we have gold at high. I'm a derivatives trader, trade electronic yeah, options and futures. I trade crude, I trade gold, wheat, soybeans, corn. Today was a great day to trade and many times in trading we have to wait for opportunities. Today the opportunity came and with those opportunities uh, in the personal account I made over $28,000 in my personal account today trading. Sports betting um, and the markets have so many similarities because they both require you to be very disciplined. They both require you to have a game plan. They both require you to um, have excellent money management skills. John is a, like a monster, a beast networker. 
and shrewd. You know, I listen to him talk, make all these business calls and I've learned so much just being there and how to be aggressive, assertive, and just like a man, like raw or whatever, you know what I mean? We've had the technical pullback. We are leaving the building. We're going to 1400. Uh, the guy from New Edge said that the, most of the stops are at 1370, and it's time to get long. We freaking have crushed it today, and we're only getting more aggressive as we get any more pullbacks from there. So for me, the train is leaving the building. Long, long, long. L-O-N-G, and if, and if long is wrong, I don't want to be right. I have that fire, I have that drive, and I, and I love leading. And so for me, this whole competitive spirit, the chance to compete and succeed and be the best, and I'm not there right now, but I plan on getting there. That aggression, that capitalization, is, is what, what, I, what I believe I will ultimately be the best sports better in Las Vegas. There's a lot of guys in town that think that they're sharp betters. We tend to call those guys square sharps. There are a lot of guys that, that think they have what it takes or think they have the mentality uh, to be a full-time professional sports betters. Most of those guys don't make it. I consider myself a fairly sharp better, yeah. I consider myself a sharp better, but it's all luck. I'm a fucking good better. Do you see how good I look? Yeah. Well, what else do you want to bet about? What else do you want to bet about? I'm a good looking person. I fucks on the reg. And Green Bay Steelers. I like Pittsburgh, the underdog. Give me Pittsburgh in the points any day of the year. Um, I think it's Steelers. I don't know. I, I, this is the hardest game I've ever seen to pick. It's just so close, I think. Well, my money's with Pittsburgh today. Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh is great. My team's not here, and I don't want Green Bay, and I used to love the bus. So come on, Pittsburgh. Come on! I'm at least betting $3,000. I haven't paid my wife for fucking six months for child support. She ain't getting shit. It's all going on the Super Bowl. If I win, she ain't getting shit. <laughs> you lose. She ain't getting shit. I bet $500. What are you going to do with the money if you win? I'm going to take it back to my wife so she'll let me come back next year. And what do you do if you lose? Uh, I don't tell her I bet $500. I'm going to lay a dime on them. Lay a dime? Lay a dime. All right. And what I'm going to dime Packers. Packers! Yeah. Testicles! What are you going to do with the money uh, if you win this weekend? Gamble it. I can't say too much. I want my wife to know, you know? My beautiful wife up over there, I'm going to give it all to her. Because if I don't, I'll get my nads chopped off. <laughs> I love to gamble. I don't care about what anybody else tells you. They live in town, they don't gamble. Bull. Everybody gambles in this town, one way or another, whether it be on the tables or on life. People are here to have fun, and betting on the game is part of having fun. You know, for me, it's my living, so I obviously have to take it with a different degree of seriousness. It's a very important day for us. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, we do a lot of work, use a lot of resources uh, for this buildup. Uh, it's a little, um, it's a little pressure, you know. Uh, it's out of our hands uh, somewhat, but uh, it's it's one of the biggest weekends for us, and uh, I hope that we uh, have something to show for it by the time we get to Monday. More public support for Green Bay than I expected, and yeah, that does make me a little bit nervous. Of course. Um, you'd rather be against the public in these games. The big question this weekend is if we uh, are going to receive Steeler money or not. Uh, as we stand right now, we've received a lot of Packer money. If we don't get it, lights might be a little dimmer here on Monday. In this instance, the fact that everybody seems to be betting the Packers is definitely making me nervous. I may lose 100 grand on Sunday, and if I lose that, I'm going to be in some pain. I'm not going to sleep. I'm freaking not going to be able to eat. I'm gonna walk around, I'm gonna like remember how this game played out for years and years to come because sports bettors and poker players and traders, we remember our bad beats, remember our beats notoriously much better than we remember the good things that happened to us. It's, it's a huge game for me, it really is. Uh, I lost my biggest play of the playoffs on the Jets uh, against Pittsburgh prior to the Super Bowl. And I got clients right now that aren't happy. And if I can't deliver for them on the biggest game of the year, uh, the Super Bowl, I'm probably not going to have clients, or certainly not as many, uh, next year at this time uh, like I have now. Uh, I'm being very candid with you. No one wants to lose that kind of money on the Super Bowl or any other event or any other investment for that matter, and I regard this as an investment. The Hilton actually had a rough Super Bowl last year. We're hoping to make up for it this year, and hopefully we can make up for the rough playoffs that we've been suffering through the last three or four weeks. If, if I lose 
$100,000. If I lose my, my sports betting bankroll on Sunday, I'll be devastated. Totally, totally devastated. So I got a lot riding on Green Bay tomorrow. More than my, just my wagers, you know, my reputation's on the line, and that, that, that means a lot to me. There is a Robin Hood component to this. It is the little guy versus the big guy. How are we going to beat the king who's overly taxing us? This really does level the playing field and give you a shot, and I think that we all are compelled by that sense of competition. We're gonna go ahead and start with the side and total of the game. Each person's gonna give their opinion of the side and total, and we're gonna go person by person and give their perspective on any props that they like, and then that will give each of us a chance to sort of chime in on, on the props that each person comments on. I actually see a lot of offense, even though both teams have good defense, the ball's gonna be slippery, I think all the players will make their routes, I think Pittsburgh will run the ball successfully, I think Green Bay will pass the ball successfully, I see a lot of points scored, I like the over in the game a little bit. I think out of the side and the total under uh, makes the most sense in my mind, although... Uh, there's no way I'm betting under. Uh, you can certainly understand why the money has come on the under the way that it has, but at 44, uh, you know, Roethlisberger versus Rodgers uh, in a year that has seen nothing but overs. You know, this year's been just an over fiesta. Even though I am on Green Bay, I definitely will play this game over. Chuck always teases me and says, you don't even know how to spell under. I am one of those public Joe Square guys as far as total goes that, yes, I want my money by the freaking third quarter if I can get it. I also believe in karma. I believe things happen in three as well. I saw Tiger Woods get humbled. I saw Brett Favre get humbled. I think Roethlisberger on the biggest stage of the world is going to get humbled. I think he's going to get pummeled in this game. Ted Savransky, go ahead and um, share with us your, uh, the props that you're looking at in this game and uh, make us some money. I like the largest lead over 13 and a half points. You know, uh, it goes right with the three straight scores prop. It means that at some point in this game, someone's going to get a two touchdown lead. And those two props, in my mind, go hand in hand together. That, and how does that play with your total? I mean, if you're expecting that big of a lead, how does that affect the variance of, of a total of 44 and a half, 45? Yeah, number one, it means that one team's going to score enough to sure. get a couple touchdown lead. And number sure. two, it's going to force the situation for their opponent to uh, have to throw the football. On the Green Bay side, uh, something that I've talked about a little bit was uh, the Jordy Nelson. Uh, you know, Jordy Nelson's a guy I'm definitely look to support. Uh, another guy who's come on strong down the stretch, uh, season-long numbers aren't going to show it, uh, but uh, certainly December and postseason numbers show Nelson over 40 and a half yards, over three catches, uh, wagers worth making. I'll give you one more, and uh, this one I haven't bet yet, and the reason I haven't bet it is because the limit is very small out there, and it's very hard to find, and it's a prop that we pounded last year, and that is the first field goal missed. You got wide right, you got wide left. The Packers kicker, uh, Mason Crosby, he was 22 of 28. Three of the six misses, stoink off the left upright. I think wide left's a slam dunk. The greatest thing I took away from today was the collaboration and the teamwork, and, and that esprit de corps, if you will. And spending nine years in the Marine Corps, um, one of the reasons why I joined the Corps is because it was an elite organization. And today made me feel like I was one of the elite sports bettors. You guys are the best at what you do. Tell me, if you would, why it is that you do this. There's a competitive, <laughs> competitiveness to it. There's a wanting to be the best. There's a wanting to be better than the bookmakers. And I think that, if you, for me, I can't go play basketball at a real high level or do other things competitively. I can do this at, at a very high level. So I think that, that for man, I, I think that's what it, it gets you going. But I, I guess I'm in, I'm in a minority here. I'm pretty much a mercenary. I used to like sports. I used to have favorite teams. I used to watch. I can't stand Black. sports anymore. If I see one more guy score a touchdown and not just hand the ball to the ref and sprint to the sideline, he's got to celebrate, 15-yard penalty, cost him the game. The players don't have a clue about sportsmanship, and, 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 and they don't seem to play it for the love of the game. I don't respect the odds makers. I respect the betters. The odds makers put up a lot of bad lines, and then I respect the sharp betters that pound those numbers into place within the first 10 minutes if they make a mistake. Those are the people setting the market. I mean, you look at these opening numbers for these props, you know, a sharp fifth grader would have done better than a few of these books setting some of this stuff, <laughs> including consultants that are paid to set these numbers. So I don't love it. I don't, I would be playing golf and doing something. I'm just good at it. Maybe I just feel so culturally inept that I'm not a doctor, I'm not a lawyer, I'm not, I'm not a surgeon saving anyone's life. I bet on football games and I try to find correlations that they shouldn't allow me to bet and, and numbers that are off. Money, I think we all found that money won is sweeter than money earned. I put myself through college 
betting the horses, betting sports, and playing poker at night. And uh, that was the ticket for me. And even after I graduated, I said, you know, I, I, I could have been a chief economist for any bank in, in the country, but I decided, no, I'd rather do this. It's more fun, and I'd rather win money. And all the pregame shows for the Super Bowl, ESPN, the major networks, everybody's going to have a pick. Everybody's going to have an opinion. They're still going to be getting their paycheck, their million dollars for being on TV. Everybody, for, for the most part here, has to earn. Their opinion has to mean something. Uh, it, it's valuable to them, or it's not valuable. You know, we get paid by our opinion, where other people can throw out anything and it, it doesn't matter. Well, yeah, there, there are consequences to losing right. uh, from our side. And when you ask Terry Bradshaw, there's no consequences. There, when zero. The wrong side. This is the American spirit right here. Whether it's speculating on real estate, making investments in small businesses. I mean, look at them as small business owners in the U.S. right now. We are, we are a small business. Each one of us runs our own small business. So, spending nine years in the Marine Corps, I'm very patriotic. I love this country. And let's face it, you know. Exactly. <laughs> I want to be better than all of those guys. And they've won contests and they've done things, but I'm convinced that they don't have my fire. They don't have my drive to succeed. And they don't have my freaking moxie to freaking throw down limit-sized bets on, on opening lines and move lines around and take a stand against everyone. The sports betting industry is surprisingly competitive. At the same time, there's a, a sense of camaraderie and a sense of cooperation because uh, you know, there is a scenario where a rising tide will lift all boats. Fezzik is an alias, and it's from the movie Princess Bride. Andre the Giant plays Fezzik, and I always liked the big lug. And there's a scene in the movie where he, he loses a fight uh, when he goes one-on-one -on -one against someone, and to his defense, he says, when, when you're used to fighting 20 men at once, sometimes you forget how to fight just one. So having had a lot of success in sports handicapping tournaments, fighting 300 people at once, sometimes when I only have to get one game right, and I lose it, I say that. People aren't going to like this at all. Give me a guy that can't even name a quarterback on any team who is very good mathematically, and he usually can become a pretty sharp better pretty quickly and spot angles and trends and things that he should play on. Give me a guy that's like a lifelong experienced gambler, likes to play craps, likes to have fun gambling. D disaster. Just a disaster because he's been taught the colors wrong his entire life. He's been taught, let me have fun gambling. There's no fun. Treat it as a business. Treat your gambling as a business. Only make a wager when you have a, a positive expectation wager and be realistic. No one in the world can handicap at a rate of above 60%. And I, I'd love to get the word out on that. You hear all these scam cappers on the radio. Oh, I hit 68%. I got valuable inside information on this stuff. I'm going to kill your bookmaker. I'm going to rip his throat out. I will blow this man out. I will step on his throat until the man chokes. You know who's the one to turn to. Here at Hot Tub Sleeper Picks. Winners, 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 winners. Most guys, when you tell them you're hitting 54, 55 percent, they don't think that's very good. You can get rich hitting 54, 55. You only need to win 52.38 to break even. So anything above that's profit. Some of the top handicappers probably only win around 60 percent. I know some people around the country look at it. Well, oh, you only have to win six out of ten games to be a successful handicapper. That's all you have to do. It sounds sounds easy, but it's it's very difficult. Do you consider yourself a sharp better? No. 90% of it. Well, I know, but I don't tell people that are strangers. <laughs> Around uh, 65. I go about 70, 30. 91%. I actually never lose. I know I need to go on the road and to sell my, my go tips. Surf the I got river. good tips. There's a river. Go surfing. <laughs> I have always said, anyone who wants to bet me, I will bet them that they will not be able to pick 58% for an one year in the NFL against the lines at the Las Vegas Hilton, which are, in, are, are even somewhat stale and not the, you know, these are lines that are put out on Wednesday and they stay stale throughout the week. I've yet to have one guy call me up and actually take me up on that offer to bet me even money. I'll bet him $1,000 up to 100000 that he won't be able to hit 58%. Still waiting for the phone to ring, not an offer. Guys still saying though, when they advertise, oh, I picked 70% and I'm documented 28 and, and nine, bullshit. You know, you're just, you're just in a boiler room and you're just a crook and you're cheating people and you should go find something else to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch this message now! Please, what am I, what do I suck at? You need to write it yourself. Uh -huh. How I'm going to treat betting as a business. So okay. you treat your sports service as a business. Right, and you're betting, poker. And your betting as a hobby. No. Oh, I've seen it. Yeah, Absolutely. No, no, no. Maybe not the poker hobby? as a hobby. 
but I'm saying like like this is the man all the time. It's unbelievable. He's on air. He's like, yeah, you know, this is an NFL game, and right now you can get the money line minus 130. It's going to go up to minus 155, and all the money is going to be on this side. And I'll be driving around, like, oh, he's right. Like, oh, yeah, I agree. And, I'll be like, and so I'll hit two, three places, get down. Then I'll call him up and say, how much did you get down on that? And he's like, well, I was busy doing the radio show. <laughs> that's true. That's treating. That is true. That's treating betting as a hobby and treating sports information service as your job. That is true. And then, and then of Guilty. course. He might even go and lay minus 150 because instead of <laughs> it's a good bet. told everyone to take his number out. I'm Kara Epstein. I'm Ted Savransky's fiance. And I remember the first time I noticed like, oh my God, people that don't know Ted, know Ted. And it was at a casino and we just went in to play cards. And I mean, like 10 or 12 people came up to me like, hey, Teddy Covers, I love you on the radio or whatever. And it was so weird. It was so weird to me. There was definitely that defining moment where I think even he railed eyes that like, wow, if I go into a place where my peers are, I'm noticed. We're off of Pittsburgh over here. We're going to get Pittsburgh cracking Green Bay right in the teeth. I'm telling you now, you're betting on Aaron Rodgers, he'll be out by half time. You gonna be taking the ice pack to the head. <laughs> I like the Steelers. They're gonna knock the block off of the Packers. Personally, I like the Pittsburgh Steelers. I'm gonna take them with the over. Uh, lock it up, you know. I mean, I won some money in years before, so uh, I think I know a little bit what I'm talking about. Who you like for the Super Bowl, Teddy? <laughs> I like Green Bay. Green Bay. Oh no, I'm going out. The Mid American team, the All America, the White Hat. The Green Bay, I love Green Bay myself. Jerry Kramer told me I'm a mouse for betting Pittsburgh. I said, I say, Mr. Kramer, I can't bet with my heart. You know, since I'm a little boy, I love Green Bay. And I love all them guys, but sometimes you gotta bet where you think is really gonna win. Whether you win or lose, sure. you gotta go with your gut and what you think is right. You can't bet your heart. I agree 100%. First time in Las Vegas, 22 years old. I'm a fresh face here. Do you know, do you know that man? Do you know Teddy Covers? No, first time I met him, but uh, I think my bets are better than his. <laughs> I mean, I win 80% of the time. You know, I mean, people that haven't bet consistently for a long time will often uh, count very high percentages of the wagers that they think that they're winning. So, so talk to me about this 80% that you're hitting. Uh, you know, I mean, I'm just taking, I try to throw a couple favorites in it, and uh, I just try to get, take a couple underdogs. You have a spreadsheet? You have a spreadsheet where you track all of your wagers so you can actually know that you're hitting 80%, or you just kind of think that maybe you're sort of well, hitting 80%-ish? You know what, I'll say that maybe sort of 80%-ish, sure. but you know what, I'm uh, at least 75% to 80%-ish where right. I'm hitting. I'm, I'm going to give you my email, okay. all right, and okay. I want you to send me every bet you make okay. before tip-off for the next week, okay. and I will take the under 75% for as much as you want to wait. How much you in for? Oh. How much you want to bet? Well, I don't know. I mean, I'm not. I mean, how much are you betting? I am betting? calling you out right here on camera, bro. You're saying you're hitting 80 percent to the people out there. 75 percent now. Yeah. 70. Here's 70 percent, bro. How much you want to bet? You can't hit 70 percent for a week, one week, let alone a year or a month or a season or a lifetime. Oh, shit, 70 percent, bro. bro. How much you want? No, how much? No, Give me. I'm not, I'm not. Here, I got. I got thousands in my pocket oh, right well, now. Shit, I Come on. Hundred dollars. Hundred bucks. You want to bet a hundred? You can't hit 70 percent for a week. 100 bucks. No, no, because you'll take me. Bang, first. done. Yeah, great. End of done. argument. We're yeah, done. Yeah, yeah. I had to go last night. It was fun. Yeah. Except for the one guy that was really mad at me. But other than that, everything was, uh, everything was cool. You know, it was, uh, it was actually a pretty good turnout. Who was mad at you? You know, there was a kid that apparently came on camera and was bragging a little bit. About what? About uh, his potential winning percentage. Oh. Or his supposed winning percentage, so yeah. I, I called him out, and, and he wasn't happy. What, because he didn't know what he was talking about? And whatever, I mean, you know, braggadocio is a big part of the, uh, you know, the sports betting community. Everyone likes to, you know. Everybody thinks they chest. can do it. I hit 90%, I hit <laughs> 72%, percent. you know. And, uh, oh, my God. Uh, the, the documented records show it's not. Possible. Yeah, I felt bad, though. You know, he's just a young kid. Oh, thanks, Reedy. I gotta go. Okay, when do you need me home? What's that? When do you need me home? When all the bets are done. I'm just going to drive around today and see if I can find some good bets that weren't there uh, 24 hours ago. Today's a, a good day to go around uh, and uh, get some of the bets that have moved and some of the lines that have moved. That's, uh, that's the goal, driving around, finding good bets. 
it's it's almost like a, a, a game of uh, what, find the treasure, and I'm going to walk in somewhere, see a positive expectation number, and, and pop on it. Betting is a 24-hour-a-day, seven-day-a-week, 365-day-a-year job. Compared to working a nine-to-five job, uh, I imagine you know there is something glamorous about uh, doing what I'm doing. But at the same time, uh, there's also that advantage of when you work a nine-to-five job. Guess what? You get your weekends off. You know, you get your vacations. You get your sick days. Uh, if you have a bad day at work, you still get paid. Uh, and in this line of work, uh, you know, you don't get a whole lot of days off. You certainly don't really get a whole lot of vacation or sick days. And if you have a bad day at work, guess what? You're going to go home with less money than you uh, woke up with that morning. So, uh, you know, it has its, uh, has its pros and cons like, like anything else. All right, let's, uh, let's do some nickels. 37.05 over for a nickel. <laughs> let's do uh, 35.95 also to win a nickel. Let's try a couple of long shots. Let me do 32.53 for uh, just a uh, hundred. 25 uh, to 1. Yeah. And uh, let me get 4,000 to win a nickel. Beautiful. Do I know how much each game is being wagered? I don't. I, I never know how much money is in play. That would freak me out. The funny thing is when he decided to move to Las Vegas, I mean, he literally said, I want to move to Vegas and become a sports handicapper. One of the things that I admire about Ted more than anybody else that I know is he set this crazy goal and, and, he, and he did it. I love that he's confident. It's, it's great. I mean, I, I don't want to be with a man who's not confident. And he's kind of cute. Just a little cute. <laughs> Her support means the world. There are times you walk around and you feel like Charlie Brown with a black cloud over your head. You know, that does happen. I don't know if I could do it without her. I really don't. And I always think, you know, he must really, really enjoy this because I don't know how anybody could work that much and not just get sick of it. I really think that I'm a guy who has a decent balance between the work that I do and the life that I lead outside of work. I don't bring my work to bed at night. Uh, you know, when I have a bad day, I'm able to wipe it away before the next day and it doesn't carry over. I really want him to be successful and I really love it when he's um, when he thinks he's cool. <laughs> you know I've been lucky uh, to find someone that's willing to put up with my schedule and put up with my crap uh, and a lot of guys aren't necessarily that lucky. You're, you're taking a bet you're making a gamble like anything else and uh, you know I was lucky to bet on a bet, bet on the right girl. Everybody gambles I mean if it's not in a sports book or a casino everybody's gambling on something in life. I have absolutely taken a gamble on Ted, and, he, and it's, it's been worth it. This is Isaac Cash Savransky, and he is baking at this moment. He'll be ready in about 19 weeks. Well, I've got a kid on the way, and, and that's something I've, I've never had before, you know, first time dad, or first time dad to be, and, and you know, I'm not thinking about my legacy in terms of uh, you know, showing my kid that I can win a Super Bowl, I'm thinking about getting some cash and making sure that I've got the money for my kid's college education and all that, you know. The reality is that my sports betting bankroll, that's my 401k, that's my retirement fund. So uh, when I, uh, if it, when I, and I'm being confident here, you know, should I ever reach the point where uh, I've got enough to retire in my bankroll? Well, guess what? That'll probably be, the, you know, that'll, that'll be the last time you ever see or hear from me. I'll go it'll slip off into the night. Whether it's sports betting or trading the markets, uh, I've had a really difficult time prioritizing a woman in my life because I love trading so much. I love sports betting so much. I love playing poker so much. What is it about being an editor that makes you need to win? It's just something you're born with. And I think kind of wanting to prove to our, like our dad always believed in us, our mom always. So we kind of want to, you know, prove to them that we, can be successful, I think. My dad uh, was the most influential individual uh, that I've ever had in my life. Um, he died 14 years ago. And uh, I'm sorry. I feel like our strength is like how unconditionally supportive we are of each other. And yet we, 
I wouldn't say criticize, but we can be honest as well. And we know that it's like we're only doing it to try to help each other out. I had a 1.7 GPA in high school. And I, I was not a good student at all, but I went to school and like being a bookie was kind of my identity. It was kind of who I was because <sighs> I had a lot of doubts about myself. And so the Marine Corps was, was a great place to like build some confidence. And uh, other than like being a bookmaker in high school, other than, than like betting on sports, there was no sense of identity that I had. So my dad saw that I had a sense of identity from sports betting. And uh, I think he was proud of that. We just, we're survivors, you know what I mean? We're just gonna come back. That spirit, that embodiment is so important to me. I, I try and stay very close with family. Alex and I live together, you know, and he's just a huge influence and his memory definitely drives me. I don't think he stands a chance. What do you like? <laughs> Green Bay and the overs. There was money line. Jump on it right now. I need to go back and change my bet and take Green Bay and under. <laughs> I would love to see a shooter being that I took the over. <laughs> Come on, Packers, but I want the unders. I've got a lot of other stupid bets in there. Bet your rent money, you get your credit cards, go to the ATM, bet it all. Whatever I'm betting, bet against me. <laughs> G-Spot, rub it for good luck. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Fill up live girls, everybody! What are you going to have on the game today? Um, probably about 8,000. How much are you going to have on the game? A little less. <laughs> Does the IRS get to listen to this? 100 bucks. 100 bucks. What am I going to do if they win? And I win a lot of money? Is this X-rated or is this... I'm gonna go buy some pussy. Pay some bills. <laughs> I'm gonna take it right over to the blackjack table over there and give it right back. <laughs> I love it. This is America's best. A lot of degenerates in here. It's a good time. <laughs> <laughs> this is the energy of Vegas. This is what's great about Vegas. <laughs> Having the power to scare the shit out of a bookmaker is intoxicating. The first time you walk into a sports book and they move the number based on your wager, number one, it means you bet enough. You know, you had, you had enough to bet on that game. And number two, it means they respected you. And I, I remember the first time that happened, I felt, oh, wow, yeah, man, I'm somebody. I moved a line. But it's important to not let that desire to move the line to overcome my desire to ultimately be successful and make money. Do you want to be rich or do you want to be right? And I want to be rich. We got a time. We got a time. We're good. I think it might be a half second short. Oh, she's running long. She's running long already. Take your time, doll. Take your time. Oh, yeah. Let's stand. I got a marine over here. A oh, right hand over my heart, isn't it? Yeah. I got, I'm sitting next to a marine. Not a marine. I feel bad. <laughs> Quit talking. No, oh, Brave has six and a half, six, six second over under. For the word Brave, yeah. Take your time, take your time. Brave went over, she went under. Once this game starts, uh, you know, the appetite's gone. The adrenaline starts to flow. So I try to chow down before, uh, before kickoff, because otherwise uh, we're not going to be eating until... No, no, no. And, you know, like, and like your body will go into total like survival mode and become <laughs> catabolic and start burning muscle instead of fat. So, so the bottom line is I literally have 110% of my freaking bankroll. I have enough cash in my pocket right now. I started with 50,000 
on Friday. I'm down to 120 bucks. When they were interviewing me yesterday, I, yeah. I was like, uh, how much you got in action on the game? I'm like, yeah. I don't know, 15K, 20K. So I went home and added it up. It's like 35K. Fezzik will scream at you. Why are you wasting your money only having 35,000 in action? I know. You're not professional. <laughs> yeah, I only 35,000. <laughs> That's a gold mine Super Bowl Sunday. He wants me all in. You know, I don't get all in, though. What do we got? We got a coin toss. Heads. Oh, my God, heads. When people come to Las Vegas to bet the Super Bowl, they want to bet for things to happen. They like to bet the over. You know, they want players to score. Uh, we have a lot of yes and no props. They like to bet the yes. So we like it to be a very boring game, 10 to 7, nothing happening, and that would be perfect for us. Did, did all the money that came on Pittsburgh come on the money line, or were a lot of people pay, taking the two and a half? Oh, yeah, the yeah, so you, uh, would your best case scenario be Green Bay winning by a point or two? We can add another tower if that happens. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jay. I don't think Jay's quaking in his boots today. You know, I mean, if it comes Green Bay and over, he's not going to be a happy camper. You know? So you, you, you right now, have your, your biggest position is on Green Bay at Pickham, yes. and you've got a bunch back on Pittsburgh plus back. three. I feel, I feel a Yahtzee Diabolical middle coming here. And yeah, Yahtzee Diabolical middle, middle I love down. it. Get in the end zone. Oh, here, here's a third down. Even a field goal. Field goal. Right here. Depends. Big one. Yeah. I love the call. Love the call. Yeah. Right in the end zone. Nelson TV. Nelson TV, baby. Nelson. I got Nelson TV. All right, John, you cast your first ticket. I cast my first ticket. That's a knuckle bash, right, that's, my friend. That's a knuckle bash. Nice. Go back. It's the cheese, baby! Steelers coming back. Yes, Steelers coming back. Second half, baby. Big Ben's not done, you know what I mean? We're a second half team anyhow. You watch us a second half. Watch out. It's halftime. I got nothing to run around and find. No, I got a good on. bet. I got two good exactly. bets. I'm sticking exactly. with them. Nothing. Exactly. No action for me at halftime. No action is the best action. Uh, of all the scenarios I want to see, I want to see Green Bay take the second half kick and get that ball in the end zone. That's number one priority right here. Let's get the Packers up 28 to 10. And, and this is where we're a little different because I'm working a huge middle on the game where, where we, we need like 80% of the same things to happen. Still, I have more money on Green Bay than I do on Pittsburgh, but if, if Green Bay wins by three, two, or one, I have an absolute enormous day, enormous day. But still in that net, I want Green Bay to win the game, so the question is, how much risk do I want to take? How, how much sweat do I want near the end? So yes. let's, let's see what happens with the first possession here. I so, want no sweat at the end. 60% of the time it's a sweat. 79% of the time it's like a real sweat. And then maybe the other 20% of the time you, you kind of know that you're wrong. Oh, it wasn't? Okay. This is big. This is fucking big. But he's dead center, which is where you want it. Yup, let's see what he got. Oh, God, wide left. <laughs> wide left. First field goal of the game, wide left. First wide miss left. of the game, wide, wide left. left. That's yeah. a cash. So it hasn't worked out fine. We're going to cash there anyway. <laughs> I got a little wide left. We wanted that one bad. That hurts right now. I'm hurting inside right now. I wanted that field goal. That, 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 that puts us in almost a no-lose situation for the rest of the game. Would that make field goal? That, that well, it, it, for, oh, for no, you, it's a monster. For me, for yeah, for you, it's a monster. It's a monster. monster. You know, for me, I mean, my, my position on Green Bay is, you know, is still sound right now. So, I'll take it. There it is. There it is. Get in the end zone. Get in the end zone. Get in the end zone. Get in. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. There it is. Let's do it, Teddy. Let's, Let's do it, Let's do it, Let's do it. Bad boy home. Right here, right here, right now. Yeah! 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 I can die happy. Super I can die now, baby. baby. I just hit the house. We love you, Stiller fans. Hang tough. And don't forget one thing. We will be back. No question, this game was a sweat. Uh, I was hoping it wouldn't be, but it was. But games are going to be sweats. It's okay. As long as you cash your ticket at the end and you don't suffer one of these agonizing defeats, you know, uh, it's fine. Uh, Final thoughts? Yes, 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 and yes. And cashing? Yes. Cashing. I'm cashing. About $600. Yes. Yes, 
thousand, yes. I lost. I lost a few. I bucks. won five thousand. You won five thousand. Five thousand. What do you want? What do you want? Um, go to a strip club. Bottom line. Bottom line. Bottom line. I won today. It's not about having a good time. It's about winning bets. We won side. We won total. The props. We lost a little bit. You know, it wasn't a great day with the props. Side and total won. I'm sure the clients made money, and everybody's going to be happy. And I made money, and that makes me happy. Whether you win or lose, sports betting and investing is all about evolving as a trader. It's about evolving as a sports better. So in terms of analyzing the different aspects of being a successful sports better, one is how well do you gauge market movement, okay? And for me, A plus across the board there. You have to be emotionally indifferent to this process, and I feel good. Teddy, I know Teddy did well today. I know, you know, the house got hurt a little bit, but process-wise, I'm extremely happy. Ah, oh, jeez. <laughs> you know I mean? How can you ever be happy about losing money, period? It sucks because it seemed like we we're in a great position. Like the game started, we had the intercepts return for a touchdown. We're all celebrating, hooting and hollering, and then a Mendenhall fumbles in the for beginning of the fourth quarter there. And I'm like, ugh. Today was not a good day for the house. I'm certain of it. The house did not fare well. What well, we, Jay Cornegay came out and told us, worst result, Packers and over came through Packers and over. So I'm sure it was not a great day for the house. And the books got obliterated. I mean, they absolutely got crushed. I'm actually very pleased by that because square bettors that win the Super Bowl come back with more money next year and provide more liquidity. The back of the house probably wasn't a pleasant area to be. <laughs> it wasn't that bad. We were kind of just kind of um, suffering through some of the propositions that were being decided during the course of the game. Both quarterbacks went over. We had receivers going over. We had a lot of the props that the squares like to bet cash in today. Two-point conversion got made. Nice plus price pop. Everyone cashed on that. For the general public, they're very happy because most of their bets that came in on the Packers and over, they're cashing right now. But the difference between me and a lot of the guys that are cashing tickets right now, I tend to cash some tickets on bad days as well. And those guys, not so much. My guess that the state handle is probably very close to last year. Last year was 82.7. I would think that it might be just uh, just above that. Yeah, I, I think a good guess would probably be around 83, 84 million this year. When you talk about what was bet offshore, you could say easily five times that amount was bet offshore, maybe 10 times that amount. When you talk about with the local bookies around the country, you might say 50 times that amount was bet nationwide. So. Uh, easy to assume that, uh, you know, worldwide, a billion dollars went down on this game. Easy, worldwide. And even though we're saying, hey, the books got hurt, it wasn't a great day for the books, the Green Bay and over result wasn't good, the prop results weren't good. When all said and done, the state of Nevada is still going to show a profit for this Super Bowl, I'm certain of it. The power of 11 to 10 works very strongly in the House's advantage. What do you anticipate uh, tomorrow, in tomorrow morning's meetings? Wow. It's like Debbie Downer over here. What? That's... Wow. Tomorrow I'll probably be called on the carpet a little bit. It's, it's not going to be that bad, though. I mean, uh, you know, the, we had terrific volume here. The, the place was just electric. And I know that that was the, I, I think, I believe a, a lot of hard work was involved in getting this place full like it was. Even though we didn't win today, I'm pretty sure that they'll, they understand. I hope they understand why we were on the short end of it. Ted Sobranski beat the book today. Teddy Covers beat the book today. Ted beat the book. I beat the book. It was a good day. Did I beat, if, whether or not I beat the book is I lost money today. So from a P&L standpoint, I lost $13,000. Did I beat the book? Well, it depends how you want to gauge it. If you gauge it on process, I freaking destroyed them. If you gauge it on result, I lost money. So for me, it's about building a long-term portfolio of bets with a positive expected return and you know that's what we did today. You want to always be evolving, always be improving, and I'm very pleased with that in that regard. What are you guys going to do to chill out tonight? Chill out? Fuck, I don't know, man. I haven't thought. I guess we're supposed to go out, get something to eat, or whatever. I'll probably uh, call up some chicks and try and have sex with them. <laughs> always helps. <laughs> I love this game. I love this business. I love the fact that. I do everything right, and some days it just doesn't work out, you know? I'm, I begrudge no one's success, okay? I've been blessed with a nine-year Marine Corps career, people that love me, I have my health, I've met amazing people in the last week, I've been had a chance to go on the radio and share and collaborate. There's so many great things to celebrate right now, 
And from a process standpoint, I have grown as a trader in the last year, in the last two years. I've grown as a sports better. So for me, I hope they enjoy their celebration because I come from abundance and not scarcity. This is a businessman. His business is organized crime. His products include gambling, narcotics, vice, loan sharking, stolen goods, labor racketeering, and goons for hire. Illegal gambling brings in his biggest profits. The NFL is beyond hypocritical. They're ludicrously hypocritical, and they know it. You know, but they have to keep the public stance of Ooh, betting is bad, no betting. And yet they know that their core, their core audience, you know, uh, is absolutely filled with sports bettors. And you're not going to tell me that fantasy football is not gambling. It is. You know, your wagering on outcomes is not that different from the prop wagers that we were making all week long. That's what fantasy football is. The NFL says that's good, but this is bad. It's ridiculous. It's ludicrous. And they know it, but their, their lawyers make them, the, oh, we have to say that gambling is bad. The injury report exists for one reason and one reason only. That's for, for wagering. Uh, the popularity of the TV contracts that the owners and the teams got, a lot of it is based on gambling. Um, they know it exists. They want to act like it doesn't exist. They've got every right to be that way. They are the 800-pound gorilla in the room. If I could sit at a table with David Stern, Roger Goodell, and Bud Selig and talk about what betting really is compared to what the mentality is, I would have them follow me around for a day. Say, hey, look, you know, there's nothing dangerous about this. They're not ruining your sport. Sports betting should be legalized because it is in our American culture, it's in our American DNA to lead the world. Las Vegas is the de facto capital of sports betting around the world. It, there's a reputation, there's a legacy value to it. Gambling is de facto already legal in 50 states. The federal government's just not taxing it and regulating it, but it's, it's already legal, it's happening right now. There's nothing that they can do to stop it. The federal government right now is missing out on literally dozens of sources of potential revenue in an era where we have a $15 trillion budget deficit. Eventually, it has to become legal because there's just too much money in the game for the federal government to ignore. People look down on what Ted does because they don't understand it, not because it's not right or it's dangerous or it's risky. I think um, you know betting on the stock market is risky and a lot of people do that as well. Nobody lost their 401k because the sports betting market collapsed. It's real. It's normal, it's natural, it's something that guys like to do, and there's no ethical or moral issues involved whatsoever from anyone that's aware of the 21st century sports betting marketplace. None. Hey, how are you? Good, how are I just need to cash a couple of tickets. That'll be $3,130. Beautiful, thank you. You're welcome. 17, 18, 19, 20, 3,100. Excellent. All right. Here's a little something for you. Thank oh, you. thank you, sir. You're very, very welcome. The term wise guy has a negative connotation probably nationwide. You know, it's a, it's a mob term. It's a mafia term. Uh, but in the sports betting community, it's kind of a badge of honor. You know, if you're called a wise guy, that means you're beating the books. And it doesn't mean you're beating them for a day. These are beating him for a year and for a lifetime, and that's what I try to do. So eh, maybe nationwide it doesn't sound so good, but here in Las Vegas, uh, being a wise guy is a, a turn of respect. The, the thing you don't want to be called here in Vegas, you don't want them to call you a whale, you know, because those are the suckers who uh, come into town and lose their money. When I fill out my tax returns uh, under occupation, the occupation is sports better. Sports betting's problem is the way it's been marketed. Sports betting is the moral equivalent of Wall Street. It really is. Instead of betting on companies to rise or fall, I'm betting on sports teams to rise or fall. There's no difference between the two. The sports bettors problem, we haven't marketed ourselves well. It's my job to change that. You know, John Netto, 
Good guy, fantastic at knowing which way the market's going to move. And that's a skill that can make you a boatload, a truckload of money betting on sports. But, but John Nettle's not a better handicapper than I am. Steve Fezzik, the best better that I've ever met. The, maybe the best better in the world. He's literally made millions of dollars betting on sports. But Steve Fezzik's not a better handicapper than I am. Jay Cornegay, fantastic sports book director, no question. Great odds maker, great lines maker, but Jay Cornegay is not a better handicapper than I am. You know, I may not be the best handicapper in the world. There's seven billion people on earth, but I'm pretty good at what I do. So Isaac, we got to break down the games for the NFL this week. Here's one that caught my eye. I'm looking at Buffalo plus the points at Miami. You think the Dolphins have any kind of home field edge? No. Yeah, I'm with you 100%. Which game stands out to you? All of them? <laughs> Isaac, we have to stay disciplined. 